heard that there were some great uh, responses and experiences with the exhibition. So I wanted to take the time and say thank you for going to see the work and thinking about the work that I presented to you. So I did receive your questions and um, there was one question that was really difficult and I'll tell you which one when I get to it. What was your thought process behind the Baroque style of clothing represented in your work? Well, I always like to say that in order for me to drive home the intense message that I was trying to get out about injustice and racism and trauma and memory and identity and all of those things, I really needed to uh, present the work in a very contrasted way which means that the Baroque style of, of fashion is really beautiful to me um, and very well done. And I thought it would be a great way to present something that would help my viewers um, really just grab their attention and look at the beauty, the colors, the, the fashion, the detail, and kind of lock my viewers in, in that place so that I could help them start to see the more difficult aspects of the stories that I was talking about. So all of the trauma part. And what I always often say is, I really use beauty as a vehicle to tell ugly truths. Um, so the fashion, the Baroque fashion is the beauty part. We noticed the interesting titles for each of your pieces. Do you come up with the titles before or after creating the work? I actually wait to title my pieces. Um, I often feel that words can help direct an image in the process of creating it. And, and a lot of times in a way that I, I don't want it to go. So I try to release the work and the process from any pressure of it being something that it doesn't want to be. Um, and once I'm done with creating the piece, I'll take about two, three days to really look at it and, and think about, or not even think about, but really connect with it and, and have raw emotions come up. And based on those emotions, that's what I use to title the pieces. What is your reason for having yourself in the images instead of working with a model? Well, that's interesting because I'm actually not in any of the pieces. <laughs> I, I know that some models look like me and I've been told before that, that you know they do look like me, but I actually am not in any of the pieces and I work with models. The models are all my friends. You know, I'm lucky enough to know some really beautiful people um, and there's a reason for that. That's because it was difficult for me to not only be the photographer, but to also wear paper gowns. Um, I was convinced that there would be some tearing and difficulty doing, playing both roles. So for this body of work, I decided not to uh, be a model in my work. What is the central idea behind your rewriting history exhibition? That's a good one, um, because I, I wouldn't say that there's one central idea in rewriting history. There are a few. Um, what I can say is that I, I aim to explore the relationship between history, memory, and identity. Um, all of those things are very important to me um, in being able to understand or express how I feel as a black woman and how I can start conversations uh, surrounding race and trauma and injustice. And so I would say that really history, memory, and identity are central in the work. Um, what I also do want to say quickly is that I'm not inserting black women into a narrative that they didn't exist in actually black women did wear these gowns. It's just that we were um, underrepresented for sure um, and oftentimes in the backdrop. But this is not me vandalizing a narrative that doesn't belong to us. Um, this is me claiming that space, uh, which I think we deserve.
If you could have dinner with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be? So guys, this is a really difficult question for me because the list is long. Honestly, there's so many people that I would love to sit with. Um, and so I probably would have a list that has a hundred people on there. But when I thought about it some more, I think one of the people that I would, I would really love to sit with is James Baldwin, um, who was a black author and amazing, brilliant mind and activist. Um, so I would say James Baldwin would be one of them for sure. What do you want viewers to take away from your images? I usually don't like to say what I want people to take away from, from my images just because that's always going to change. Um, I even get something from the images every time I look at them again and I, and I made them. So it's kind of difficult to really answer that. I guess what I can say is I hope that um, people can sense the urgency that's in the work that they are um, open to having a conversation and that they understand that um, there's still a lot of work to do uh, where um, race is concerned. Um, I hope that my work helps people feel more comfortable having that conversation with black folks because um, it's really tiring as a black artist, as a black woman and a mother and all the hats that I wear to uh, feel the burden of often having to educate others on why um, racism is wrong or what is racist to begin with. You know, I think that it's really important for others to want to do the work. Uh, and I hope that rewriting history helps people um, want to approach doing that work more easily. Thanks again, everyone, for your awesome questions and, and going to see the work. I really appreciate you all.